So first of all, physical forces. As you may imagine, uh, physical forces can come from very different kind of um, sources. Basically, we have like a um, big distinction between natural sources and human-made sources. And uh, for natural sources, uh, we can find earthquakes, obviously, but also like wind erosions. Uh, but it's most common to find uh, human-made sources for these kind of uh, threat uh, that can come from errors of the professional dealing with the cultural heritage assets, such as incorrect handling, incorrect storage, incorrect transportations uh, or overload, but can also come from the outside. Uh, there are still human-made um, sources, such as excavations, construction works, armed conflict, traffic, and so on and so forth. And obviously it can have like huge, um, very severe effects on cultural heritage, thinking about, for example, um, earthquakes. So we can start from the complete destruction of the, uh, of the object to the collapse, the deformation, the breakage, abrasion, where tearing, so many different uh, effects that these kind of forces could have on the object. The second uh, threat is criminals. And we're, when we are talking about criminals, we are thinking about both thieves and vandals. And um, these um, criminals often um, act um, because of some behind motivations that could be political that could be ideological that could be economic for example for the theft and we have seen many many different acts of vandalism uh, all around uh, europe um, made by the activists for climate change and that um, helped to uh, rise to raise the awareness on the importance of protecting artworks for uh, the uh, acts of vandalism. Again, there could be many different effects on cultural heritage that could start from the complete disappearance of an object, obviously if you're talking about the theft of an object, but could be also the destruction or the disfiguration of an object. Then there is fire. This is one of the most known risk for cultural heritage and um, the problem of fire is that when it happens when it happens it has like a very very severe effect on the cultural heritage involved so this is the main problem because it is not very common but when it happens it can destroy everything um, i'm thinking for example to uh, the Notre Dame Cathedral um, big fire or to the Museum of Brazil big fire. And again, it can have many different sources. Again, some natural sources and human-made sources. For the natural ones that we can talk about the lining and forest fires. Uh, and from the human-made sources, we can count fireworks, faulty electrical installation, uh, smoking, candles, um, construction and renovation works. And this last one is very, very common because we have seen many, many different fires that happen during a uh, renovation work inside a building. So it would be very important to do like a risk assessment during a renovation work to avoid this kind of, um, of uh, risks to happen. And the effect, again, could be uh, very severe, like the total burning of the object, but could also be uh, less severe, like partial burning or the deformation caused by the high temperature or the deposition of soot. And another important risk coming from fire is uh, the water that um, is used by the firefighters to stop a fire uh, because that will um, obviously damage the object as well and we will see in the slide dedicated to water which will be the effects. Okay, coming to water, uh, water is the most common risk 
uh, that threaten cultural heritage. And um, in our job is the most common source of damage, especially inside archives. And again, it can have many different common sources that can come from the outside of the building and from the inside of the building. For the outside, we can have like tsunami, flooded rivers, rain, groundwater. While from the inside of the building, we can have water pipes, um, breakage, cleaning procedures, leakage, and as we have seen for fire, the water coming from the firefighting um, activities, emergency procedures. And the effects could be pretty different depending on the material uh, that is damaged. We can have staining, weakening, deformation, dissolution. Um, dissolution is very important for archives and libraries because liquid water could increase the, the risk of ink uh, the solution, so it could be very important because uh, it could cause a complete uh, loss of information from the documents and the books. There could be corrosion, weathering, salt and forests, biological growth. This is very important again. When there is water, there will be always uh, a biological uh, growth, and this is very important because it's super uh, fundamental to act promptly when there is a flooding or a water leakage inside a um, cultural heritage institution because in 48 hours the molds will start growing and the molds could have a huge impact on the, especially on books and documents. Another important threat is pests and uh, the main sources, the most common sources of pests at least in Europe, come from insects, rodents, birds, and bats. But um, the problem is that uh, often cultural heritage assets are made of organic materials, and these organic materials are like food for this kind of pests. So they consider, for example, books or wooden materials as food for them, so they will eat it. And so for this reason, there will be like very there could be like very severe effects um for example think about the termites that could potentially eat a wooden statue in like minutes in some um, areas of the world and the effects could be so the total destruction of an uh, of an asset the staining the perforation the weakening the loss of parts and past could also be very dangerous for the structures for example if you think about the wooden shelves that could be eaten by insects and could potentially collapse on the material itself. Another important threat, especially these days in big cities, are the pollutants. And we when we talk about pollutants, we talk about mm, many different kinds of chemicals dust and substances that can enter inside the, the buildings um, because of different sources. Uh, for example, we have industries, vehicles, construction and renovation works that can come from the outside and that are obviously a human-made risk, but uh, they can also come from the inside, for example, from the material itself, uh, for uh, like materials that emit gases and this is very uh, common in archives that preserve audiovisual materials especially films and it can also they can also come from the visitors themselves because of dust that can be uh, under their shoes or also the, their breath and also uh, it can come from restoration materials that can contaminate the object and the effects could be the weakening, the staining, the darkening, the erosion and the corrosion. And this last one is very important for the marble statues that are preserved outside in big cities that are uh, super um, threatened by the pollution coming from traffic and industries.
Another very common source of um, deterioration is light and UV rays. Obviously, this uh, threat is um, coming from the sun itself or the um, electrical light sources. And uh, both of them are um, related to a human error on the uh, conservation of cultural heritage because every single um, window um, inside of a museum, of an archive, of a library should have like a protection for uh, UV rays and every single light that it's used uh, inside a building should be uh, suitable for the conservation of cultural heritage. And the effects could be very different, like color fading, yellowing, weakening and disintegration. Another common source is the incorrect temperature. Again, this comes from an, a human error and uh, the um, incorrect levels of temperature can come from the outside, obviously the local climate and the sunlight. And this is very important right now because of the uh, rising temperature uh, that are happening uh, right now because of climate change. So we have to try to understand how to um, adapt the uh, inside um, atmospheres of conservation because of these uh, different temperatures um, that are coming from the outside. But the incorrect temperature can also come from the inside, like, for example, from incandescent lamps or eaters that are not suitable for the conservation of um, cultural heritage. And the effects could be the um, increasing of the um, rapidity of the deterioration caused by chemical reaction, the deformation, the dehydration and the breathment of some kind of materials, especially paper. Another very important threat, especially in archives and libraries, is the incorrect relative humidity levels. And this can come again from the outside, depending obviously on the local climate where the building is located, as well as from the inside for uh, like uh, inadequate uh, air conditioning procedures or an inadequate uh, microclimate um, control. And the effect could be very different depending on the materials who we are talking about. Uh, the, it could be the deformation, cracking, flacking, delamination, weakening, corrosion. But the most important thing is that high levels of relative humidity can increase the risk of mold growth. And mold growth can have a huge impact, especially on paper materials. And the last threat is probably the least known threat for cultural heritage and it is the dissociation and when we talk about dissociation we are referring to a partial or total loss of information related to a particular asset and it can come from different sources but all of these sources are related to a human error uh, so incorrect procedures of conservation of some assets so it can come from lack of inventory poor documentation or identification of an asset uh, misplacing of objects hardware or software obsolescence uh, staff retirement and so on and so forth and the effects on cultural heritage are the um, total or partial loss of information about specific heritage assets as well as the loss or inability to access heritage items.